In the early 2000s, when I was still young enough to think X-Files was the scariest show I could ever catch on TV, there was a different show that haunted my dreams. Not because it was particularly scary to me. Once you see some of the things I've seen on X-Files when you are 8, I think you are pretty much ready for anything life throws at you. Well into my 20s, I thought this show was just a fever dream, that it was my mind playing tricks on me, because no one from my home country ever saw it or even heard of it. I didn't know the name of the show, so whenever I tried to explain to someone what it was, it always felt like I was describing it a little bit differently than it really was. And to make matters worse, whenever I watched the run of the show, the episodes were always herring in different order. It was like having a living urban legend in my head, ever evolving and teasing me with flashes of the faces that I recognized from the show but never actually knew the name of. Some weeks back, I finally found it. I was searching through some horror movie communities and I finally saw a post mentioning it in passing. And seeing the name of the show and actually saying it out loud felt like getting a 20 year plus whiplash through time and space. I was no longer a normal, functioning human being with the one red flag of potentially having made up an entire show in my head. No, now I had the confirmation that I'm just as boring as everyone else and in fact I didn't direct my own TV paranormal investigation show within my brain because now I knew the name Freaky Links. Freaky Links aired October 6th in the year 2000 at Fox. I'm very certain that I watched it a couple of years later outside that airtime. In my country it's not uncommon for TV stations, especially the public access ones to just buy a license to wear that show's ad nauseum to fill empty slots. But even considering that, Freaky Links really was a special case. But before we get to that, I need to give you some more context. You see, this show is related to another very well-known franchise that was quite revolutionary for its time, The Blair Witch Project. I'm scared to close my eyes. I'm scared to open them. Axon Films was the production company that created The Blair Witch Project, released in 1999 and they wanted to ride the wave of popularity of the movie with something that could tap into the same market. And here's where things get really interesting for the child version of me. I didn't know that the Blair Witch Project wasn't a real thing for like 4 years after I watched it. I can thank my sister for that one. I was a kid and didn't know any better, so when she told me she had this VHS recording that was supposedly very scary and didn't provide any context of how she got it or that it was just a movie, well, me, the kid that watched X-Files at 3am, afraid this guy would come and hit my ass, bit into that story and believed it was real. And how could I not? It's not like I can go on the internet and see if it's real. If I asked my parents, they would kill me for watching stuff like that, so, you know, you just believe it in your own child-sized world. So, when Freaky Links started showing up at my late night browsing of the TV channels that none of my friends were able to catch, it just fed into my belief that there was something really off about it. So let's talk about what the show is really about. Ethan Embry starred as Derek Barnes, the main character who runs a website called Freaky Links, dedicated to investigating paranormal and supernatural phenomena. The show follows Derek and his team as they explore various mysteries and encounter strange and supernatural events. There is an attempt at an overarching plot to the show, but the main focus really is the monster of the week formula that could be seen in X-Files or Supernatural. If you watched my previous video about Kindred the Embraced, you totally should if you haven't by the way, you already know what comes next. I'm going through all the episodes one by one, providing a plot summary of each one, highlighting some interesting things and providing some context clips. 
Keep in mind that these are very simple summaries for the sake of time and put together to give you a feel of the show, not necessarily to provide you the full context. After that, I'll give it the proper review of the show and give you more context and insight into its production. If you don't want to get spoilers, just skip to the next chapter after the episodes. Let's begin. Episode 1. Subject Fearsome the episode starts with Derek Barnes, the lead investigator at Freaky Links, explaining that his twin brother gave him his job at the website. The job is simple, investigate paranormal or weird events and document them by posting stories about them on his website. He explains that during one of the investigations he was running, he had a sort of vision and when he returned home, he found his twin brother dead in the bath, supposedly committing suicide. The episode fast forwards and we get to meet the second member of the team, Jason. He definitely starts as one of the weakest characters of the group until the showrunners give him an actual purpose towards the end of the series. This episode revolves around Derek and Jason investigating an auction of a severed head that is haunted. Time to go! No time for windows! They also consult with the third member of the squad, Lan, she is the tech specialist of the group. While they're working on some leads about the auction, Derek gets a video where he can see his twin brother Adam following a woman showing up at a security camera. If you think this thread of the story will go anywhere on this show, spoiler alert, it won't. Derek does meet his next member of the team, Chloe, a psychologist which was also the girlfriend of Adam. She says that Adam was investigating Roanoke, a well-known American legend where pilgrims disappeared without a trace. And the only thing that the investigators found was the word Croatoan, carved nearby. Adam believed that a shapeshifter could be involved in this, because who wouldn't? Derek finds in his notes the name Vince Helsing and pays a visit to him on a mental health institution. He explains that Adam found a group of beings that feed on fear and that they are not human. Derek also gets visions from a girl who was born in Roanoke and when he finds some glyphs at Adam's house, he gets attacked by spirits. But also by an ninja-like woman, the one that appeared on a security video with Adam. It's a very busy episode, ok? Elsing shows up to save them, warning Derek he shouldn't meddle with things and we can only assume that he ran away from the mental institution to provide this warning. The ninja woman flew through the window, never to be seen again. However, Derek is determined to continue to use freaky links to help people. Episode 2 Subject 313 in this episode, a man fears his pregnant wife is possessed, so they seek help from Derek. But not before this. Up late? Yeah. Jason and I were playing a little network shoot mm -hmm. on. Yeah, I noticed you disabled a bunch of the extensions to enhance your rate of fire. Yeah? Mm-hmm. Why? What did I do? Oh, you erased them off the hard drive. I did? You did. I didn't. You did. How'd I do that? You did it. Do you have backups? I do. Derek, I've shown you how to disable the extension safely. I know, I forgot. I... Some problems of the past remain today, huh? Should have downloaded some more RAM. Or used Opera GX. Ah, Opera GX! I'm kidding, it's not an ad. If you want to see an ad for a browser in the future, please subscribe me. After some investigation, Derek asks Chloe to lend her expertise to this case. Chloe is very skeptical of this, but when they watch the woman play the piano, as only a master could, even though she wasn't trained for it, they feel there is something to investigate here. Some of the blocks on the baby's room also got rearranged to spell the name Delaney Park, a pianist that has been missing for months. The pregnant woman recognizes Delaney in photos and that she gave her a ride while Delaney herself was pregnant. She offered her some help and now they think that Delaney is requesting assistance by placing the pregnant woman in a catatonic state. Yep. This makes sense. Eventually Derek and Jason find a drainage hole where Delaney's body was hidden and confront her mother about it and she confessed doing it as she considered Delaney was throwing away her piano playing talent for a baby. Overcome with guilt, she eats herself off the balcony and the pregnant woman recovers. I'm not going to sugarcoat it, this episode was a real downer, probably the darkest of the bunch. Episode 3 Subject Edith Killer Must Die 
Derek has seen news footage from a New York TV station in which something drags a man into a sewer and calls Chloe for help. But she has hooked up with another dude so she's not interested. So Derek, king of sanity, takes Jason and Lan in a road trip to crash Chloe's hotel suite while they investigate. Derek starts interviewing New Yorkers about what they've seen. He meets a man who says more people live in the tunnels. Derek doesn't believe him, surprisingly, but eventually goes into the tunnels to try to retrieve his camera that got stolen by some punks. Eventually, one of the punks tells him that long ago one of the workers at the tunnels discovered cannibal underground people that used echolocation and attacked people. Derek and Jason investigate further and Jason is dragged underground. Derek helps him and saves a single frame of a cannibal visible on his videotape. Listen, I'm a believer. So, when Derek tells me this is a cannibal mole man, I believe him. If the cannibal mole man chooses to wear a mask to stay incognito and a nice varsity jacket, it just shows character, okay? Episode 4 Subject Silicantis Derek, Jason and Chloe are driving home after not finding the Tennessee Bigfoot. That's not even me being funny. When they find an injured girl next to a car wreck. They take her into town as she tells them something took her boyfriend. The sheriff claims it's just a bear problem and encourages them to leave town quickly. But Chloe remembers some book about a man who had a psychotic break after seeing ancient evil in the woods, in the same town they are in. As they investigate the woods, a man with a shotgun warns them to get out of there. These goofballs go back to the woods only to be attacked by the worst bear ever. The man with the shotgun saves them and then shows them a Native American Turner bird totem pole he keeps to ward off this ancient evil. He also has a stash of dynamite for when it returns. Derek thinks about the legend of the Thunderbird and wonders if this might be an extinct creature that is attacking people. That night, the man with the shotgun goes into a cave where he thinks the creature nests. He gets attacked and explodes the cave with dynamite within minutes. Derek managed to get out just in the nick of time. Honestly, one of the weakest episodes. I get that they were trying something different, but just didn't work for me. Episode 5 Subject Desert Squid Myth or Legend Derek, Jason and Chloe make a trip to investigate mutilated cows. They receive the video from a guy that gives them an address and asks them to investigate it. Apparently there is a legend of a desert squid that makes these attacks. The guy from the mental institution of the first episode makes another appearance, Vince Elsing, and warns Derek to stop investigating. Frankly, Derek doesn't give a damn. They meet up with Falcon, the guy that tipped them about this case, and he says they need to investigate a corporation called DeSanto, who created the desert Desert squid, according to him. Falcon used to work for the Santo, transporting things and dumping them into the desert, until he found altered humans in the boxes he was dumping, and then he has become a tinfoil hat enjoyer since then. The group returns to a diner and discovers a bomb that Jason eats out, and turns out the locker is an elevator, which takes them to an underground laboratory. Oh my god, this show is so hard to explain. Oh my god. They watch a video from the lab featuring Vince Helsing narrating about a scientific project. And then a bunch of tentacles happen, nearly killing Chloe. As they prepare to leave, a tentacled arm attacks the thugs from the center, and the tentacles are attached to the guy from the diner. All I wanted was a roof over my head. My own business, that's all! You think I wanted this, do you? He admits that he mutilated the cows, he wanted the meat and publicity for his diner. I'm sure there is nothing wrong with the burgers in this town. I really liked the episode because it reminded me of the goofy X-File episodes that we used to get on the first few seasons that really showed the writers just having fun with it, you know? Again, very hard show to explain, this episode especially. Episode 6 Subject The Arbingers Derek gets a dream with Adam, where he asks Derek to read a book called The Arbingers and tells him to investigate psychics in a town where the author of that book lives. 
Chloe explains the novel is about invisible creatures that prey on human weaknesses and control them somehow. The crew arrives and discovers that Ashcroft, the author of the book, died three years earlier and that he was a crazy man with a book and no one wanted to read it. Vince Helsing makes another appearance demanding that Derek finish what his brother started by investigating the Arbingers. Derek studies the people of the town and concludes they are infected by Arbingers. We get a bit of drama between Jason and Derek as Derek is sounding way too crazy even for the standards of a paranormal investigator. It's one of the first times that Jason really feels like a solid character too. I'm trying to understand what happened to Adam. He killed himself, Derek! He checked out! Why can't you just accept that? Derek eventually realizes that the Arbingers book is magic and wards them off the real Arbingers. The book author used to distribute it to the town to ward off the evil and help people, so Derek decides to upload the novel on the internet to protect everyone. Jason and Derek make peace once again and they are back to being bros. By now this guy Vince is getting on my nerves, because he either appears to tell Derek to get away from something or to investigate it, but never actually explains anything. It's one thing to keep your characters in the dark for a long time, but the audience kinda needs some soft reveals at some point. It's like having your very own version of the angel on your shoulder and the devil on the other shoulder, but none of them actually make an argument for the recommended action that they want you to follow. This guy Vince is both the angel and the devil. Episode 7 Subject Still I Rise In these episodes, Derek and Jason go to Miami to investigate the death of a rapper called XT. Basically, he was recording a music video when his wife showed up and after an argument, she accidentally shoots him. While Derek and Jason investigate, they find some grave robbers next to the rapper's final resting place and they are terrified, claiming they saw his ghost. There's also a plot going on about Lon having feelings for Derek, which he promptly ignores because he's obviously in love with Chloe. Typical romance drama in TV shows, moving on. Lon uses her racking abilities to get the gang an entry into a party where XT's album will be released. They want to get information out of this record label guy, but end up walking away with nothing. But not before Derek gets himself into trouble. Alright, Reese, I just saw ST, and you're about to see him too. Maybe not! Oh, that doesn't sound good. Joy, the rapper's wife, eventually goes to talk with the gang and asks them to stay out of it, raising suspicions on herself. Jason and Derek then go to see the music video director to see if he has any other clues and the dude gets electrocuted by a Casper the ungodly ghost. After a very cringy moment of Lon showing off her new romantic interest, Chloe uses her knowledge of folklore and recognizes a symbol on the floor of the music video set, which indicates some kind of ritual. To cut the story short, because honestly this episode was just a giant leap of logic to another one, Chloe discovers there was an effigy, basically a life-sized doll of the rapper, created to shift a curse from him into the doll, and then the doll was buried away. Problem is, these two dumb asses broke into it, got out and started killing everyone that XT knew. Both XT and Joy disappear after the effigy is destroyed, and that's it. Episode 8 Subject me and my shadow. A woman and her son walk into a bathroom and when they got out they see a bunch of people dead and the shadow possesses her kid. The kid starts showing signs of depression and children of the corn vibes so Chloe is hired to consult on the case since she is a psychiatrist. She tries to use what she knows to help the kid, but since the case has some weird events Derek tries to get in on it. Chloe is reluctant as it would risk her medical license. He tries it anyway and creates trouble for Chloe, that can mean she will lose her license. More on that later. After some investigation, they find that the previous man that was possessed by the shadow had bought a box where a shadow vampire was trapped. This shadow vampire is trying to kill everyone around it and the kid to feed off his fear. It's a pretty straightforward story from here. The gang gets their hands on the box, traps the vampire back into it with some creative thinking. Episode 9 Subject, the stone room. 
This episode is very much a development for Jason as a character. His father runs a law firm and it's revealed Jason actually has a law degree. Should come in handy every time Derek breaks into something throughout the series. Yeah, but he didn't say where. <clears throat> Derek and Jason go back to Baltimore to see his dad and sister. Jason's dad had this episode during a meeting and so his health is in a bad shape. His health issue is related to flashes and visions he suffered while at the law firm's headquarters, something that another lawyer eventually experiences as well and Derek too. After some investigation they find that in the ye old times there was a group of men that went missing. The truth is that another man killed them and now he is back as a ghost to keep his secret intact. After some ghost killing time everything ends well. There were deeds for these lands now revealed which also help the current case that the law firm is working on to help an old lady keep her own. I have mixed feelings regarding this episode. It's a good one for Jason to develop further and show some personal growth, but at the same time it's a convoluted mess of lore being found randomly. I didn't care much for it, honestly. Episode 10. Subject. Live fast, die young. Derek gets sent a video from a friend named Biggs showing a man jumping from a bridge and surviving after getting splattered onto the floor. Biggs is abducted from his home after sending this video to Derek as Chloe tries to reach him for further information. Meanwhile, Derek and Jason investigate the bridge to learn more about the case and after some talking with the locals they find there was a body discovered on that zone not long ago, which the coroner reveals he died of pure fear. Chloe comes through with information about who sent the video to Biggs and when they all go to the location they get an explosive surprise and Derek is kidnapped. This couple of lovebirds have been injecting themselves with some serum made from people that die of fear, making them somewhat invincible. And do you know what they do with that incredible power? Stop the car! Yep, they just crash a car on purpose, immortality is wasted on the young. They play a sick game with Derek and Biggs to see who gets to live and hang out with their degenerate brains. Chloe and Jason find them out and stop the game in time but the cop also shows up and shoots Derek. And I really don't blame her. Derek survives because of the serum but also becomes extra asshole and goes with the two bandidos to steal a van with valuables. Derek double crosses them by replacing the real serum with Nutella or something and the other dude jumps off the bridge to get away from the police thinking he has taken the serum but splatters down below. His girlfriend follows suit because she is the true ride or die and die she did. Episode 11 Subject Police Siren Another video is sent to Derek and he investigates what appears to be two police officers arresting someone. The weird part is that one of them blocks himself inside a car that was clearly going to explode and he dies because of it. The team splits up to investigate this one. Chloe and Lon talk with the police chief, Jason and Derek go to a bar frequented by cops to see what they can find out. While Chloe and Lon get to backseat the police car and see how a policewoman works, Jason and Derek find a very hostile cops not wanting to hear about their paranormal investigation. This investigation progresses anyway and they see a cop saving someone from jumping to end their lives only to then jump and end his own. A waitress spills the beans about the cops moving into a crime scene in progress, guns blazing and putting another cop in a coma because of it. So to cut a very long winded story short, some more cops die until the team figures out that the cop in a coma is doing some kind of astral projection thing and making those cops kill themselves. All in revenge to the police chief and everyone else involved that tried to cover up their wrongful actions. Well you know what a siren is? Not the kind on top of a cop car. No, not the kind that goes woo woo woo, but a beautiful woman that lures men to their deaths. Episode 12 Subject Sunrise at Sunset Streams on this episode we get the return of a subplot, Chloe potentially losing her medical license. Since she needs an hefty amount of money to pay for the legal proceedings, Derek decides to take an unusual job for him, convince a woman in a elderly home that Bigfoot isn't real. I know right? 
This guy trying to convince someone that anything kooky doesn't exist. Yeah, okay. But he accepts it because he wants to help Chloe. And because this dude wants to keep his mother-in-law at the elderly home and prove she's kinda insane. So they investigate this elderly home a lot and find out that this is no mere Bigfoot. No, it couldn't be. This is Florida. So this is the elusive skunk ape, the bad smelling cousin of Bigfoot. This episode is very entertaining actually, but I'll just cut it short. It's an old man that found a puddle of water that when drunk turns him into the skunk ape and he does it to steal woman panties. Derek actually tries the puddle of water himself too. Um, check this out. I don't know, man, man. Oh, it feels so weird. Oh, God, that's so... Oh, oh my God. Oh, it hurts. It's pretty good. I'm going to show you another clip where they basically waterboard the skunk ape to revert him to his old man state. <laughs> Chloe does get through the legal proceedings successfully and she is in the clear. This episode is my favorite because it just leans into the ridicule so much. They were self-aware about the absurdity of the episode and they just ran with it. Episode 13. Subject. The final word. The final episode has a weird format and I kinda wish the skunk ape one was the final episode of the season. I think it would have made a lot more impact than this one. It's a sort of news report about a teenage murderer that killed his friend, but the Freaky Links gang are not convinced he did it, so they decide to investigate. While they do so, they brought the attention of local news, so they are included in a news report investigation. Talking with the kid and doing some investigation on the video, they believe that his murder was actually done by some kind of creature and that the kid is innocent. A lot of the episode is the news reporter questioning the validity of Freaky Links investigations, which it's very fair for them to do so. I know what I saw. Derek Barnes, a journalist in the loosest sense of the word. With the help of Lon, they conclude there is a giant insect that is responsible for the murder and even end up finding another of the victims. They investigate this type of beetle that was being researched by a scientist that is married to one of the key witnesses. Turns out that the scientist has been meddling with beetles in the weirdest way, one of them cocooned inside of her and a giant ass insect has been killing people after getting outside of her. The witness is arrested because no one believes it's his wife beetle doing the killings and the episode ends with victory for Freaky Links and the kids wrongfully accused of murder goes free. The one thing I thought about when I finished rewatching the show was what a waste of potential. The actors and characters are super fun to watch, but the tone of the show is all over the place. It's like it can't decide if it wants to make fun of itself and similar shows, or wants to evolve the genre. And that's pretty much confirmed by the cast as well. Ethan Embry, that played Derek, said. I had a lot of fun making it. It was the Blair Witch guys that created the show, and when he did the pilot, it was a lot darker tone-wise. It was more about suicide and the devil and the antichrist, but when they picked it up, a new showrunner came on and they scrapped the whole devil idea and made it a little more popcorn fair. I think that decision was fine, but they were consistently trying to figure that show out the entire time we were working on it. He does go on to say that he had an absolute blast doing the show and it's confirmed by his castmate Lisa Sheridan that played Chloe. That was a blast, probably the most fun thing about the show was that as a part of the storyline, all our characters carried around video cameras wherever they went. I love the fact that they gave the actors a camera to just run around and interview people while playing their characters. It's very much Blair Witch inspired, which is what the creators of the show knew worked well. It gave it an amateur found footage vibe which totally works for the kind of show that it is and I don't think I've seen any other that mix this so well with the editing. And the actual direction and editing was very tight and concise, especially when you consider this was probably a very low budget show. 
It also has the whole prost grunge and surfer vibe with the music and the aesthetic, which really makes it feel unique. When a scene opens up with a nice music playing and the Freaky Links gang is hanging around, it feels like such a good time. It draws you in, you want to be in that room with them, just goofing around. Music is one of the things that I really value, and if I had to point out one thing that is perfect in this show, is how well they selected the songs. And to put my money where my mouth is, I've compiled an entire playlist of the Freaky League songs into a YouTube playlist that you can find in the description. Shout out to this user on Reddit that compiled it before me, it helped a lot to figure out what was playing when. I feel the biggest downfall of the show was not finding its target audience. It was definitely trying to target teenagers, although some of the stuff that is constantly shown on the screen was quite heavy. So it was trapped between wanting to stay friendly enough that you could watch it with your family maybe, but not heavy enough that the more hardcore fans wanted to stay with it and found it cool to share with other people. The marketing they put behind it was clearly not enough. Although they had set up the FreakyLinks.com website and that created some buzz, at the time you couldn't get an audience just from that. Blair Witch did it, but that was also launched a year before, so what's the chance of lightning striking twice for the creators? For a show created by Fox, which I always thought that had some decent money to throw around, they seemed to not believe the show. It was also picked up by Schiller TV later on after cancellation and from what I understand it found some success there with a lot of reruns. The website was a pretty interesting find, I managed to somewhat browse it with the help of the Wayback Machine and it contains information about the cases that Derek and the gang investigated, some of them weren't even featured on the show. It's not your run-of-the-mill fan site about the show, it's all written from Derek's perspective and it makes the whole thing so much cooler. There was even a discussion group kind of thing, which I can't confirm if it was real or just made up content, if anyone knows, please tell me in the comments, as I'd be very interested to learn if there was any kind of confusion about this website being real or not before Freaky Links as a show premiered. I know this happened with the Blair Witch Project, so Maybe the same could have happened with Freaky Links? They even had a sort of review from Derek about the Blair Witch Project and he hated it, which got a chuckle out of me. Where can I watch it? To find this precious gem of a show, you can just search for it on YouTube. It's that simple. There's some fans that keep it alive by posting the full episodes. Over on Internet Archive, you'll also be able to find the episodes for download. And of course, I'm leaving some links for this on the video description as well. It's a shame that I can't locate a higher quality source for the video though. It looks very degraded. I need your help. I need to ask all of you for help with something quite simple. Tell me about older shows that involve vampires, werewolves, witches, paranormal, that kind of stuff. I want to dive into more of these kinds of shows that I may have watched or missed entirely and see how they hold up and eventually make a video about it. To be clear, they need to be focused on these weird themes. I don't want shows that just add a couple of episodes about it or anything like that. Leave your comment down below and I'll be sure to credit you once the video comes out. Thank you all so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video, if you haven't already, check out my Kindred The Embraced video, I think you'd like it a lot. Please like and subscribe, it helps my motivation a lot and I'll be happier to crank out these videos faster for you. I hope you have a lovely day and bye bye.